Hello, and welcome to Searching the American Antiquarian Society Catalog, Anatomy of a Catalog Record. This video will give a quick overview of what's in a catalog record, and it will also highlight some of the differences and specific things about records for different formats and materials, including a book, a newspaper, a manuscript collection, and a marriage certificate for graphic art items. We'll start by looking at the catalog record for a book, the third edition of A Choice Collection of Hymns and Spiritual Songs by Sansom Occam, which was printed in Hudson, New York by Ashwell Stoddard in 1787. When you look at the catalog record for a choice collection of hymns and spiritual songs, the first thing you see up at top and bolded is the title of the item. For all printed materials, this will be transcribed from the item itself that's being cataloged. That's followed immediately by the imprint or publication statement. In this, it's, it's Hudson printed by Ashwell Stoddard, MDCC LXXXVIII. This is also going to be transcribed from the item itself for printed materials. Anything that's added for the, from the cataloger in order to help clarify or expand information is put in square brackets. In this instance, the cataloger chose to clarify that Hudson meets Hudson, New York, and take the Roman numerals for the date of publication and put them as Arabic numerals as 1787. Following the title and imprint information, there's also a short section that has some fiscal description. So for instance, we know this is 109 pages and that it's 14 centimeters tall. And then following that, we have two collapsible sections. The first one, more about this item, includes notes that have been added by the cataloger in order to help give more information about the title being cataloged. There can be two kinds of notes, copy general notes and copy specific notes. The first notes you see that are labeled notes, colon, are copy general. And so they're notes that apply to any copy of the third edition of a choice collection of hymns and spiritual songs. They're all without music. They're all compiled by Samson Ockham from the works of others. At the bottom, you see local notes, and local notes are going to be copy specific. And so this particular copy, the American Antiquarian Society copy, is inscribed Phoebe Woodward, her book, and Betsy Vale, her book. The other thing you'll see in this section is references. And so these are bibliographic citations for standard reference works. In this instance, AAS has cited the English Short Title Catalog or ESTC, the Biobibliography of Native American Writers, and a supplement to Charles Evans' American Bibliography, as well as the National Index of American Imprints through 1800. So these tell you where in these reference sources you can find additional information about a choice collection of hymns and spiritual songs, the third edition. Following the more about this item section is a find similar items section. And so this will have subjects and genres, what something's about is a subject and what something is or has as the genre or form. And then it also lists contributors to the item. Um, in this instance, Samson Occam is identified as a compiler, AAS catalogers have identified the printer as Asheville Stoddard, and they've also included the provenance information for Phoebe Woodward or Betsy Vale. And so the great thing about this section is it's there to help you find similar items. These words are all links, and if you click on them, so for example, I click on Sansom Occam's name, what it does is it takes you to indexes in the catalog for creators, or if you click on a subject for subject, so in this instance, the creator index for Samson Occam tells me we have 30 things where Samson Occam is identified as a creator. And if I click on his name, it takes me to those search results for all 30 of them. And so I can look at the different editions of choice collections of hymns or spiritual songs, or I can find other things he was a creator of or contributor to. Also in the catalog record at the very bottom, you'll see this holdings information. And so this is where you can actually request the item. If I wanna look at this in the AAS reading room, I can click request. And what it does is it takes me to my, my web AAS page where I can request the item. So I'll, what I want to do is come down to the bottom, specify my date of visit, so that the reading room knows where I'm, when I'm going to be here, and then I can submit my request, and that will go to the reading room staff. 
The other thing I want to point out in the catalog record is this box on the right hand side, which has some links and actions that can be useful. Up at the top, we put links to online copies of something. In this instance, there's an online version in Evans Digital Edition. The lock says that this is a link to a proprietary database, and so it's a subscription database. I can access it while I'm on AAS's campus, but I can't access it from home. If a link doesn't have a lock on it, that means it's an open source link, and so you can access it anywhere. So for example, materials that are in Potty Trust or Internet Archive, or that have been digitized and put in AAS's own digital archive, GG, are freely available no matter where you are. After that, um, there's some actions listed. So you can print this record, email it to yourself or somebody else, or export the record. And finally, you can change the page display. And perhaps the most important one of these is the display with static URL, which if you click that, gives you the permalink for the item which looks like this. And the great thing about a permalink is you can take it, I just controlled C to copy it. You can email it to yourself or someone else. And when you put it in the URL, it takes you straight to the record. Next, let's look at a record for a newspaper. In this instance, the North Star. If you look at the catalog record for the North Star, it looks a lot like the record that we just looked at. So for example, there's the more about this item section, which is notes from the cataloger. And then there's find similar items, which is hyperlinked terms that can help you find similar items, followed by the holdings information where you can put in a request to see the North Star. What I wanna point out for the North Star, and this is something that AS does for its serials, that is its newspapers and periodicals, is over on the right-hand side, under more about this item, there's a link, list of issues owned by AAS. If you open that, what that does is it takes you to clearance, which is where we have a database of our individual issues for all of our serials, our newspapers and our periodicals. And so this tells you what specific issues we have. For example, for the North Star, we've got the November 24th, 1848 issue, the December 22nd, 1848 issue, the February 13th, 1851 issue, et cetera. These are the issues held by AAS. And so this can be really useful if you wanna look at a particular issue, or if you wanna look at a range of issues around a particular date or event, and that way you know what we have, and so you know what to request. Next, let's take a look at a manuscript collection record, this time for the Tatnik Lady Sewing Circle. This is the record for the Tatnik Lady Sewing Circle collection. Like the other records, the title is up top, although because this is a manuscript and not printed material, the title is typically being supplied by the cataloger for manuscript collections, and it tends to be more descriptive. Again, you'll see the more about this item, which gives some notes about the Tatnik Lady Sewing Circle collection. And then you'll also see the find similar items, which are hyperlinks that can help you find similar items as well as the holdings information so that you re can request what it is you wanna look at. What I wanna point out with manuscript records is two things. First is the additional collapsible section called historical background and summary. And so what that does is it gives you some background and some contextual information about the manuscript collection. Generally, the historical background will give you the historical context, and then the summary gives you an overview of the collection and what's in it. What you also may see in a manuscript record off on the right-hand side is a link to the finding aid. And so what a finding aid does is it gives you information about the collection, again, on a high level. And then often it will give you a contents list and that will help you specify which materials you wanna look at if you're only interested in particular parts of the collection. So for example, if I'm interested in the 1899 meetings, I know I need to look at Octava volume number four, which has the records of meetings for 1899 in it. And then I can specify that when I request, make my request. Finally, let's take a look at something from AS's graphic arts collections, in this instance, a marriage certificate. To quote the curator of graphic arts, you get at pictures through words. And if you look at this, it's predominantly visual in nature, 
although there are some printed words on it. When you look at the catalog record for the marriage certificate, you do see the printed information on it. This certifies that blank and blank were united in the bonds of matrimony, blank day of blank in conformity with the ordinance of God and the laws of the commonwealth by blank minister of the gospel. What's happened is in printing, these blanks were left to be filled in by the person filling out the marriage certificate. However, what this doesn't do is it doesn't tell you anything about the images or the content or who was married in the AAS copy. And so what you do is you look at more about this item and the cataloger has filled in the information. They've described it as a marriage certificate with for a border on image of an angel holding up two frames at center within the frames or album and photographs of the bride and groom. And then they've also specified how it's filled out down in the local notes, which are copy specific, so that it's annotated in manuscript that it's filled out to Henry J. Maxwell and Martha Louisa Dibble on the 13th day of September by John Johnson, minister of the gospel, Camden, South Carolina, Rectory of Grace Church. And so the cataloger has that added in all this information, the visual description and the local notes about what's there in manuscript so that it's searchable with a keyword search and so that you can find more information and it's available from just the transcription. They've added words to the catalog record so you can search for the picture. The end. Thanks for watching.